Good afternoon. Today is the second, the vigil mass for the second Sunday of Easter, which tomorrow we will be calling Divine Mercy Sunday. Please stand. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Ye sons and daughters, let us sing the King of Heaven, the glorious King. O'er death today rose triumphing. Alleluia, 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 Alleluia. Good afternoon. In the name of the Father, and the Son, of the Holy Spirit, amen. amen. The grace and the peace of God our Father, and the Lord Jesus Christ, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of you. And with your spirit. As we prepare for our celebration, let us call to mind our sins and ask God for pardon and forgiveness. I confess to Almighty, to Almighty God, God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words and what I have done and what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, and the Virgin, all the angels and saints, and to you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And our prayer of praise together. Glory to, to God, God in the, the highest, and on earth, earth peace to people of goodwill. Good we praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, Almighty Father, Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you, to, Father, you, you take, take away, away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world. Receive our prayer. For you are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit and the glory of God the Father. Amen. And let us pray. God of everlasting mercy, who in the very recurrence of the Paschal Feast kindle the faith of your people you have made your own. Increase, we pray, the grace you have bestowed that all may grasp rightly, understand in what font they have been washed, by whose spirit they have been reborn, by whose blood they have been redeemed. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. The community of believers was of one heart and mind, and no one claimed that any of his possessions was his own, but they had everything in common. With great power, the apostles bore witness to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus, and great favor was accorded them all. There was no needy person among them, for those who owned property or houses would sell them, bring the proceeds of the sale, and put them at the feet of the apostles, and there they were distributed to each according to need. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. Let the house of Israel say, His mercy endures forever. Let the house of Aaron say, His mercy endures forever. Let those who fear the Lord say, His mercy endures forever. I was hard pressed and was falling, but the Lord helped me. My strength and my courage is the Lord, and he has been my Savior. The joyful shout of victory in the tents of the just. The stone which the builders rejected has become the cornerstone. By the Lord has this been done. It is wonderful in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us be glad and rejoice in it. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His love is everlasting. A reading from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is begotten by God, and everyone who loves the Father loves also the one begotten by him. In this way, we know that we love the children of God when we love God and obey his commandments. For the love of God is this, that we keep his commandments. And his commandments are not burdensome, for whoever is begotten by God conquers the world. And the victory that conquers the world is our faith, who indeed is the victor over the world, but the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. This is the one who came through water and blood, Jesus Christ, not by water alone, but by water and blood. The Spirit is the one that testifies, and the truth is Spirit, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia. You believe in me, Thomas. Because you have seen me, says the Lord. Blessed are they who have not seen me, but still believe. Alleluia, Alleluia, Alleluia.
Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. On the evening of the first day of the week, when the doors were locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. The disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. Whose sins you forgive are forgiven them, and whose sins you retain are retained. Thomas, called Dynamis, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples said to him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark of the nails in his hands, and put my finger into his nail marks, and my hand into his side, I will not believe. Now a week later, his disciples were again inside, and Thomas was with them. Jesus came, although the doors were locked, and stood in their midst and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and bring your hand and put it into my side, and do not be unbelieving, but believe. Thomas answered and said to him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you come to believe because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and have believed. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples that are not written in this book. But these are written that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that through this belief you may have life in his name. The Gospel of the Lord. Now this gospel is very powerful. It's interesting. Jesus comes to his disciples and where are they? Twice. You know, he comes, we hear at the beginning, he, the door, the, the, basically he walks through the door. He didn't knock. He came right through. And they're in the locked room because they're being hunted by the Roman and Jewish authority. This is not weeks later. Things are happening very quickly now in the scripture. And so Jesus, and they know, I mean, they knew what happened. I mean, they already knew because Mary Magdalene told them that before running to them, the tomb is empty. The boulder is rolled away. Where is he? And yet they're in, up in the locked room through John's gospel. He doesn't say that, but Jesus comes through. And he says peace three times, any time in the scripture where Jesus will repeat himself more than once. Again, he talks, Jesus mentions love. And again, in the scripture, he, he, peace is mentioned many times, but I, I looked up how many times mercy and forgiveness are mentioned. Those who like numbers, mercy is mentioned over 261 times and forgiveness over 121 times. Again, any time. Jesus repeats himself more than once. That's the direction of our life. That is how we're called to live. You don't have to be a theologian. That's the direction. We just don't want to do it. And yet Jesus comes, to say, peace be with you. So no locked door, no boulder, no cross will hold Jesus and he tells, and with Pentecost, he will breathe on his, this Holy Spirit upon them. And yet, the, and he says, receive, receive the Holy Spirit, but much more detailed than under some of the other Gospels. To come, there's work to be done. Open your heart, open your mind. We got to go. We got to give life to others. And Jesus' whole mission was about mercy, forgiveness, New life to everyone he encountered. 
because the other gospel writers have it, but just John didn't have it here, that, you know, after the resurrection, after the crucifixion, they're out fishing. They've gone back to their old way. They went fishing, and Jesus comes walking on the water. And they were afraid, and he says, do not be afraid. And that was his mission. You know, even before Pilate, Pilate asked Jesus, is it not, any, there's a whole crowd, and the disciples were in the crowd. Is there not anyone here to defend you? They didn't come forward, we know. His own, the ones he called, his friends, they remain silent and mute as Jesus is whipped and going off now to the crucifixion. No one here to defend you? Pilate would ask. And yet Jesus comes to them. Do not be afraid. Peace I give you. That's who Jesus was. That's what he was about in his life. He called these apostles. He called his disciples. There's work to be done. I forgive you. I'm not going to hold a grudge. I'm not going to remember your sins. I'm not going to make you grovel. Peace. I forgive you. I believe in you. I love you. That is the Jesus we follow. And Jesus from the cross, Father, forgive them. They do not know what they are doing. That's all of us. We cannot have a poor self-image. We cannot come to Mass, and so many Catholics, it's unbelievable how many have spiritually poor self-image. They are successful in many areas of their life, extremely successful for some. And yet, when you talk to them and about Christ and about religion, it's amazing. God can never forgive me. I am so bad. I've done this. I've done that. It's amazing. And I said, who told you that? To Jesus? No, but other people. And yet, it's, they believe it. We've got to get over that. Because that's an excuse not to live your faith. That's an excuse not to leave this church tonight and I don't know how it's going to happen, but you, are, you might be called into action. Are you going to be when you go home? Maybe even, even tonight, the person you're sitting next to, I don't know. Are you going to be a person of forgiveness, of peace, of mercy? It's not called, we're called to be a doormat. We can't just say disrespectful things to our family members and make them grovel. It's not that at all. That's not what I'm talking about. It's about you and your relationship with Christ. Getting over what you might have done 20 years ago or 10 years ago or five minutes ago, or even driving even to church, to allowing the mercy and the love of Christ to enter fully into your life because there is work to be done. And we are called, believe it or not, to go out and Catholics, and I've said it here, and I've said it in many churches and the shrine, we are called to transform the world. And we are not doing a good job. Easter celebration isn't just a celebration. It is a transformation. We already have, should have been, years ago, transforming the world. And we don't. It is not, I have, Catholics, unfortunately, in the church has, a done, has done a good job, but a bad job, really. It's you doing your duty at these celebrations. It's not a duty so much. It's a, tra it's a commitment. Your baptism as a child, as an adult, we're called to transform. We're called to go out and witness the resurrection. Move the boulders or whatever prevents us from our life, whatever holds us back to go out. Yes, we must challenge the world. We must speak the truth. 
You are not going to be popular, especially today. Our world is a disaster, absolute disaster. We know it. We hate one another. We just do. We hate ourselves. We see the great disrespect every day on TV. Again, it's amazing how we can outdo ourselves with hate and violence. There's no, there's no respect for anybody. It doesn't matter, even if you're doing a good deed. It doesn't matter. You are challenged right away. Or the new word today, it seems like the can- you're canceled. The canceled culture. Amazing. It's got to happen in the church. They're going to they're gonna come. They probably already have. Not only to the Catholic church, but all Christian churches. Really. They're going to try to cancel out the church. What we do. Say we're not open. Say this. We're this. We're that. Who knows? Doesn't really bother me. We have the truth. We speak the truth. And Jesus says, there are people who are not going to love you. You're going to be attacked. And yet, he empowers us through the power of the Holy Spirit, and he sends us out, what does he say? That peace of love, that peace of healing, that peace of reconciliation. That's what will change and transform the world. It was opposite of hate. It was opposite of violence. It was opposite, opposite with armies. The, the Roman Empire couldn't stop Jesus. The Roman Empire collapsed because there were so many other reasons too, but so many Christians were being crucified, really. The church was beginning to grow. Finally, the disciples will get it. And they will too be, be cru- some will be crucified. They'll all be t- many will be tortured. Most will die. They all don't die. But again, the church grew. The church transformed the world. It overcame violence with love, with forgiveness, with peace. That is our witness for each and every one of us. But it must begin with yourself, allowing the love and the the transformation of the cross of the resurrection to really transform you, to believe in yourself, to believe in the love and the mercy of Christ. Not to believe, and I say it many times because I know in families we say the most horrendous things to one another. We, we destroy one another, really. You know this. I'm not telling you something you don't know. We know how to hurt and cut someone down in in an instant and destroy them, sometimes for the rest of their life. We have to stop doing that. And if we have done that, we need to apologize. And saying I'm sorry is not a weakness. It's a weakness in our world, in our society. It is not a weakness through Christ. It is a strength. Again, when we can say, that's the cross, Father, forgive them. If we can say, I'm sorry, then we're on the right track, believe it or not. And even though the person you say it to might, could care less, it doesn't matter. Is it hurtful? Yeah, it's hurtful. But it, Jesus went to the cross for all of that. I say that in light of all this stuff I'm saying. We are not going to be popular. We are going to be attacked, believe it or not, by people mostly, by our friends, by our families. The good deeds we do are not always going to be reciprocated. But Jesus went out. His disciples now will go out. And they will witness the resurrection. It is about love. It is about transformation. It is about making the lives around you. And for most of us, it's going to be ordinary things, really. It's ordinary. We can give people compliments. We always don't have to have the last word. We really can keep our mouth shut sometimes. And if a person is unkind, maybe let that go. 
Offer that up for, we just, again, the violence in our world, the terrible plight of the migrant children at the borders of our, of our country. Not their fault, not these little kids, babies. We can offer that up for them. We can do other sacrifices when we're hurt. That's the cross. We can leave that at the cross. But we have to go. We have to speak loud and clear the truth of Christ, the truth of the resurrection. You do not have to know, well, I was going to say, you don't have to know your faith. Yes, you do. We all should. We all need to know it a little bit better. But you, again, it is a witness of love. It is a, the, 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 Jesus' disciples, uneducated. What did Jesus tell them? Do what I do. Do what I did. He talked to people. He met people where they were at. He heard their stories. He challenged them to do better, to change their life. If you do it this way, it might work out a little bit better. He built up their poor self-image to see the good in themselves when other people threw, walked on them and threw them to the dirt. So we can do better. That's what we're called to do, really, for most of us. Some a little bit more, maybe, I don't know. But we know how to speak words of love. We know how to speak words of forgiveness and kindness to build someone up instead of destroying them. That's who we are as followers of Christ, this resurrection, this divine mercy. Sister Faustina, image of, of the mercy of Christ, beautiful painting that she was inspired to paint, the image she got from Jesus himself. St. John Paul II, elevator to saint sainthood, a nun, just a common nun in the convent, no, no status, nothing special. But the, the mercy of Christ came to her. Paint, this is what I want. It happens to all of us as well if we allow it. Allow the power and the presence of God to fully come into our life, to go out and live it. That's what's going to transform this world, our society, a society of hate. We must show, we must be an army of love, a Christian Catholic army of love, of forgiveness, of decency, even though around us there might be all hate, unkind words. Again, we must, to understand this, we must be people of prayer. We must go to church on a regular basis, not only on the feast days of Christmas and Easter. Churches were crowded, even in the pandemic. A few more people than other weeks. But without a pandemic, they would have been packed. You know this. But to fully live the Easter mysteries, the resurrection, and your baptism, this isn't a habit. And I say it many times and all, anywhere I go, this is not a filling station. I've done my duty today. I've met my obligation as a Catholic going to Mass once a week. That's it. See you next week. Don't bother me. That is not who we are. That is not the Eucharist you and I are going to be receiving week after week. Jesus calls us by name to go out and to transform the world, to witness the resurrection through our words, through our actions. That is who we are as Catholics in the world today that desperately hates itself, desperately needs you and I. You and I today, and some of us are nothing wrong with it. We all call to do this. We can be prayer warriors many different ways. We can pray, and the Lord hears those prayers. Some more of us, we need to go out. We already go out. But again, how do we do it? <laughs> by being polite, by being decent, by respecting one another, giving compliments. Even, you, don't, you might think that's foolish, but that's what Jesus was doing. When we hear words of hate sometimes, maybe we, I'm not saying we need to get into altercations with strangers, but maybe, again, we can pray for that person 
We can be those prayer warriors. But when we hear maybe people we know in our own life, within our own families, we need to correct. We need to challenge. But that's who we are. That's what the resurrection was all about. Not only 2,000 years ago, but once again today, for each and every one of us to live that resurrection, to be that light into the darkness of the world. And that is something we need to celebrate and praise God that each and every one of us has been called by name to go, to be those disciples where Jesus is telling us, peace be with you, be not afraid. I send you, I send you out. I am with you to the end of time. That is the Jesus we follow. He will never abandon us. He has not rejected us. He has empowered us with his love, with his mercy to go out and witness that love, to witness that mercy to one another. God bless you. And please stand and will profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son, one <coughs> of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life to world to come. Amen. Amen. And it's in that spirit of love we pray and make all our needs to the Lord. For church leaders, through the benevolence of God, may they be strengthened and fortified by the prayers of all people. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For government leaders, may God bless them with wisdom and forthrightness. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For victims of any kind of abuse, may the Lord bring their suffering to an end and bring them comfort and healing. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For the neophytes recently initiated into the church, may the joy of their baptism fuel a long life missionary discipleship. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have died, may they soon be in eternal union with the risen Lord. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. For Joanne Menard, whose anniversary occurs today, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. We continue to pray for all those affected with COVID-19 and continue to pray for all first responders and those who have died. We pray to the Lord. In drawing all our prayers through Mary, we say, Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for our sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. And merciful God, we thank you for hearing all our prayers and those prayers that remain in the silence of our hearts. Pray that you grant and meet all our needs. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen.
two were bound for Emmaus, disheartened and lost. All their hope for the future had been nailed to a cross. Love unknown then walked beside them, come back from the dead. And they knew he was risen in the breaking of bread. On the sea of Tiberias, when the night was nearly gone, and their toil seemed so useless, not one fish had they caught. From the shore the stranger called to them, Cast your net, friends, once more. And they filled it to bursting, but the net was not torn. I pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at your hands for the praise and the glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church. Accept, O Lord, we pray, the oblation of your people, that renewed by confession of your name and by baptism, they may attain unending happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with all of you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Father most holy, through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your word from whom you made all things, whom you sent as our Savior and Redeemer, incarnate by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin, fulfilling your will and gaining for you a holy people, he stretched out his hands as he endured his passion, so as to break the bonds of death and manifest the resurrection. And so with the angels and all the saints, we declare your glory as with one voice we acclaim. <clears throat> holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the font of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks. He broke the bread. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for all of you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, 
and drink from it. This is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Let us proclaim the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, Edgar our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, all, have mercy on us, on us all we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles, and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, May we merit to be co-heirs to eternal life. It may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him, O God, almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. In confidence and in love, let us together sing the prayer that Jesus has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant your peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord always be with you. And with your spirit. Thank you. Please offer each other some sign of peace. Peace, peace.
Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed. At this time, you can make a spiritual communion. I love you, O oh my God. I cannot receive you in holy communion. Come, nevertheless, and visit me with your grace. Come spiritually into my heart. Purify it. Sanctify it. Render it like unto your own. Amen. Precious body, precious blood, seen as bread and wine. Here the Lord prepares the feast divine. Bread of Love is broken now. Cup of life is poured. Come share the supper of the Lord. This this is the bread of God coming down from heaven, giving life to us, to all the Precious body, precious blood, seen as bread and wine. Here the Lord prepares the feast divine. Bread of love is broken now, cup of life is poured, come share the supper of the Lord. I am the living spring of eternal life. 
you that drink from me shall not thirst again. Precious body, precious blood, seen as bread and wine. Here the Lord prepares the feast divine. Bread of love is broken now. Cup of life is poured. Share the supper of the Lord. To the Pasco victim, give thankful praise. Christ ever sinless, his sheep now he saves. Death and life contended. In dreadful strife, death did not hold him immortal his life. Alleluia, his triumph we sing. Christ is arisen, the victor and King. This Sunday, April 11th, is Divine Mercy Sunday. There will be a holy hour at St. Andrews from 2 to 3 p.m with the Divine Mercy Chaplet at 3 p.m. Confirmation rehearsal for all candidates and their spouses in this Sunday, April 11th at 1.30 at Annunciation of the Lord. Confirmation is on Thursday, April 15th at 7 p.m. with Bishop de Cunha at Annunciation of the Lord. Bible series, The Gospel of St. Matthew, continues this Tuesday, April 13th at 6.30 p.m at Annunciation of the Lord. All are welcome. Faith Formation resumes Sunday, April 18th for grades one and two, as well as Confirmation one, grade nine. St. Joseph Chapel is open daily for adoration, 7 a.m. to 7 p.m., except during mass times. Please remember social distancing. There's plenty of information in the bulletin. Please remember to take one home and share it, all that is going on in our parish. And let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that our reception of this Paschal Sacrament may have a continued effect in our minds and hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. And please bow your heads and pray for God's blessing. May God, who by the resurrection of his only begotten Son was pleased to confer on you the gift of redemption and of adoption, give you gladness by his blessing. Amen. Amen. May he, by these redeeming work, you have received the gift of everlasting freedom, make you heirs to an eternal inheritance. Amen. Amen. And may you who have already risen with Christ in baptism through faith by living in a right manner on this earth, be united with him in the homeland of heaven. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God 
in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit come upon you and stay with you. Amen. Amen. Our celebration is ended. Let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. Have a good night. Thank you, Father. You too. Joyful strength.